Thank you very much. My name is Marion Mwebi, working with Plan International in Tanzania, Kigoma Refugee Camps. It hosts more than uh, 290,000 refugees uh, hosted in three camps, and there are many from Burundi and Congo. 60% are children and young people. Uh, the first COVID-19 case was confirmed on 16th March 2020. Even though there was no lockdown, schools and play, uh, community play areas were closed for about three months, but they have since been reopened. Plan International is the lead child protection partner and is supporting operationalization of case management across the three camps. Uh, some of the interventions provided include case management, alternative care, positive parenting, child protection trainings and capacity building, among others. The intervention I would like to focus more today is provision of alternative care during COVID-19 response in Tanzania. The objective of the adaptation was to ensure plan is able to provide alternative care for all children at risk and support those in existing alternative care. At the onset of the outbreak, we developed an internal operational continuity plan which had different scenarios and this was in line with the UNHCR and government COVID-19 response plan. This helped to ensure continuity of vital services for at risk children in need of alternative care. And the adaptation uh, included both face-to-face -face and remote programming modalities. We didn't do this alone, but we coordinated closely with UNHCR, UNICEF, other child protection partners, communities, health actors, among others. This interagency collaboration uh, helped us to identify and orient new foster parents, case workers on child protection risks during COVID, but also helping in understanding health, health perspective and how to keep children safe. So this was necessary due to unexpected increase of categories of children that would also need alternative care. And uh, also uh, we identified community engagement, which helped in screening of standby foster parents. Even though there were general fears about the risks of COVID, more community members enrolled uh, to become standby foster parents. We provided additional support uh, to the standby carers, such as provision of uh, personal protective equipment. We developed infection prevention criteria, which was translated into local languages. We provided foster parent kits, NFI, among others. Uh, we also supported in distribution of some funds to maintain two-way communication with foster parents, which was also complementing the hotlines that we had. We conducted capacity building to case workers, community volunteers, and other actors. And through this, we did some adaptations, for example, having small group sessions of 10 to 15 participants uh, while maintaining physical distancing and integrating with health measures. The venues were selected uh, to allow good air circulation and the sessions were shortened to about one hour. Other sessions were also conducted through adapting technology such as through Teams, Zoom, Skype, and uh, while other follow-up sessions were also conducted through the phone. So we also did additional facilitation, for example, provision of airtime, phone for community volunteers, visibility materials, among others, which helped uh, in community identification. The existing caseloads were also analyzed by plan uh, due to limited access to the camps. For example, high-risk cases or remained under, under the responsibility of caseworkers, while medium to low-risk cases were assigned to the trained uh, community caseworkers and child protection committees. This helped in ensuring alternative care arrangements are supervised and urgent needs were communicated to plan. The existing child protection help desk also remained operational, which helped to get feedback from beneficiaries about alternative care and FTR services in light of ongoing uh, repatriation of Burundian refugees. 
The outcome of these interventions include enhanced understanding on CP risks, child protection risks during COVID, key consideration before placement, keeping children safe, referral pathway, and maintaining two-way communication. The intervention also helped in reducing vulnerabilities of adolescent girls while reducing the burden to foster parents. We have observed increased desire and willingness uh, for more community members willing to care for children. Uh, we experienced some challenges, for example, uh, insufficient financial and material resources to support adequate PPE, printing and translation of key tools, among others. Some of the lessons learned includes importance of building on existing relationship with communities, having already trained case workers, volunteers, which quickly helped us to adapt to remote programming modalities. The quick tips developed internally, but also through the Alliance, were also helpful in maintaining uh, the quality of interventions. So lastly, documentation of all these best practices, impact and lessons learned is instrumental for ongoing COVID response, but also for future replication in provision of alternative care during any infectious disease outbreak. Thank you.